Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have finally arrived at the day of Pentecost, the day 50 days after the resurrection from the dead of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, having defeated death and being able to rise for the first time, uh, to be able to rise from death and then to not only rise from death, but to spend time talking to his disciples, being able to teach them, to continue to show them the way, and then eventually even going right back to heaven from where he had come. Amazing. It's an amazing event that the Lord could do for us. Uh, nobody else could do that. Now, who else can rise from the dead? Who else can go and teach while he has risen from the dead? Who else can walk through walls as he did when, um, when Thomas was doubting? Uh, he was able to walk through the wall to the room and show himself to his disciples, particularly to Thomas. And then Thomas proclaimed, my Lord and my God. These are amazing events that we Christians share, that we Christians are so uh, proud of our Lord that he was able to do all these incredible feats. Many people admire heroes. Some of you here uh, love football, and that's good. Yeah, football is good. It's very good. Um, and it's sporting, and you can exercise your body and have a clean mind. And many of you may have heroes. You may have heroes like, say, uh, some of the great players that are playing football right now, like maybe Lionel Messi or maybe some of the other uh, great uh, players playing for Barcelona or playing for uh, Manchester United or Juventus or whatever. And some of you follow these great players and you even try to maybe imitate them. And you look at their skills and you think, amazing how they can kick, how they're able to do incredible uh, things with the ball that just are amazing. And so you really admire them for that, and you should, because that's great skill. But imagine, imagine someone who dies, he comes back to death, from death, he lives, he's able to walk around, he had died, but he's able now to come back to life, he's able to take water and make it into wine, he's able to talk to you. You um, have to understand who your champions are. There's football players that will play for 10 years and it's all over. It's all over. By the time they reach a certain age, they can't play anymore. So their time of glory is limited. It's got an expiry date. You can only play for so long and then it's all over. And then everybody forgets you and you were a hero, you were a champion. One day, nobody will remember Lionel Messi. One day, nobody will remember, already some of the great players of the past have been forgotten. Some of the greatest players, George Best, you've never heard of him. George Best was a great player, nobody remembers him anymore. We have the greatest player of all time, Stanley Matthews, nobody remembers him anymore. Pele, another example. The Pele was the beginning of this new uh, uh, athletic soccer, athletic uh, jumping and doing somersaults, kicking the ball. Pele, who remembers Pele? You understand, these things will pass away. It's good, it's good now to be able to be part of it, it develops your body, but your heroes, if they are football players only, by the time they come out of the game, You've lost your hero. But in Christ, my friends, in Christ, he never dies. Pele will die. Um, uh, uh, Lionel Messi will die. Uh, all the great players in Barcelona one day will die. But Jesus, this is it, Jesus is able to die and come back to life again after three days. Not only that, he's raising other people from the dead. He's able to do amazing, walk on water. Lionel Messi cannot walk on water. Hello? Nice. I said Lionel Messi cannot walk on water. Nice. Jesus can walk on water. Hallelujah. Amen. So who's going to be my hero? Obviously, I will enjoy Lionel Messi's incredible skills. I will look back on YouTube with Maradona doing incredible things. 
uh, against England in the great final he played, scoring uh, goals after goal. I will look at that and be amazed by Maradona, but Maradona cannot rise from the dead. And Maradona cannot walk on water. And Maradona cannot forgive your sins. And he cannot make you go back to heaven again. So we need to focus on our real champion, the greatest champion of all, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has come here. He doesn't have to come here. He's come here because he feels sorry for us. Uh, as we say in the, in the, in the chant, uh, Papa God feels sorry for us, for we. Feel sorry for we. And he has. He has felt sorry for we. And so he has come to earth. And then he goes back to heaven, but he doesn't leave us alone. It just doesn't go back to heaven. It would be like someone coming uh, to you, and they start a project, and then they leave you. They leave you. No. He will never leave us. You see, he's with us forever. Even today, here, right now, where two or three have gathered in my name, I am there with you. That's what Jesus said. So we have Jesus with us right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then he said, I'm going back to my Father, but I will not leave you alone. I'm going to send down the Holy Spirit to you. The Holy Spirit will come and He will show you all truth. The Holy Spirit will come and He will guide you. So you will not be alone anymore. You will be guided by the Holy Spirit. I will be with my Father. I'll be watching you. I'll be still taking care of you. But the Holy Spirit is going to come right down here on earth and be with you. The Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is not like a wind or a force or an energy, it is a person. It is a person. It is like we have the Father, a person, God the Father, Papa God, and we have God the Son, uh, the Pekin God, and then we have God the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't have three gods. We have one God, but they are like one family. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is coming down on the day of Pentecost. And when it did come down, Oh my goodness, what it did. Great change in the, in the church. Incredible change. People were afraid. People were scared. People were the disciples. They didn't know what to do. Uh, they thought everything was lost. Jesus has gone. Our leader is gone. We don't have anybody to turn to now. Who are we going to turn to? To ourselves? We we're following him. He was our leader. And then suddenly as they are praying, locked, locked, locked in a room. They were afraid. It would be like here, locking the doors up. Because we, we're worried about the police coming and breaking up this church service. It may still happen. <laughs> no. I'll put the blame on you, Father. <laughs> um, and so um, they were scared, very scared. Uh, but then suddenly they heard the rush of wind. And suddenly as they looked up, they saw all this fire coming upon them. Tongues of fire. Like, it's raining fire. But it's not hot fire, it's cool fire. Fire that does not burn. It's cool fire. The fire we have here on earth is hot fire. It's a fire, you put your finger in it, it will burn you. You will have all kinds of problems with your hand if you get it burnt. But this fire of God is cool. It doesn't burn, you see. And so, therefore, uh, this fire would come upon them. It would make them strong again. It would make them now have no fear. And they would go out and start preaching. Even though they were afraid before, now they are preaching to thousands and thousands of people. We are told by the Holy Word of God that they managed in one day, in one day, to convert thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. In one day, thousands and thousands and thousands of people to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's an amazing event that happened. And then, not only that, but there were people who had come to Jerusalem on pilgrimage. That is, they were worshipping the God of Israel from all over the world. They had come for that feast. And suddenly, Peter and, and, and Matthew and the Bartholomew and the disciples, they get up and they begin to speak in the language of these people. It would be like me now speaking in Mende. I don't know Mende. Imagine if I started speaking in Mende. You'd be so surprised. Well, that's exactly what happened to uh, that day of Pentecost. Everybody began to understand the gospel in their own language. That is why today we have decided to 
uh, do the liturgy in all different languages to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, may the Holy Spirit come upon you. May the Holy Spirit guide the church and, and, and show us all truth. May the Holy Spirit also remind us constantly of the words of Jesus and to sanctify. Remember, those of you who are baptized in the church in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So let us not grieve the Holy Spirit, but we need to be always, always praying to our Lord, being in, in control of our emotions, being in control of our appetites, and of course, always trying to do what God wants us to do. So may the Holy Spirit, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, come upon us and enlighten us and sanctify us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.